Well, good morning, everybody. It's April 23rd, Tuesday. Um, we're having warmer days, a beautiful sunny day yesterday for Earth Day, and I got quite a bit of work done outside in the gardens. I think maybe it got up to about 12 degrees. Uh, this is mid-morning now, about 10 a.m. or a little later, and uh, last time I checked it was only up to 7 degrees and we're starting to get some cloud. Um, supposed to have some more rain tonight but the forecast for the remainder of the week is sunshine. It wasn't that a strange title that you just saw down there for a video. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to my canaries in the coal mine here in just a few minutes. I want to get my onions transplanted today but first I've got to prepare an area in here in the hoop house for them and uh, check the pH which is what I'm doing with all of my plantings this year trying to adjust the pH to a more appropriate level. I'm hoping that uh, will help some of the production in here. And I want to show you a big mistake that I made with uh, Cape gooseberries or uh, ground cherries, whichever you prefer to call them. I love them. I had one huge plant in here last year and I made a mistake of not doing a big cleanup last fall. Anyway, let's have a look around at what's going to happen here today. Those are my two canaries sitting over there on the bench. Uh, a what is it called? A King Arthur, a hybrid variety of uh, green bell pepper, and the small tomato seedling next to it is a yellow multiflora, um, one of those tomatoes that um, produces large clusters of very small grape size or whatever tomatoes. Anyway, it was free seed from Praxis seed giveaway this winter. First time I ever took advantage of his generosity, but um, I'll only be growing one of those in the hoop house anyway, and the, I have three or four, I think four or five maybe, seedlings started. I'll try the rest of them outside, but they're an indeterminate variety, and I'm trying to stick with determinate varieties in here. In the canary business, uh, our nights are still quite cool, and I'm trying to determine if it's time that I could bring seedlings out here or not, so these two are just going to be kept watered and, and on the bench, and we'll see whether or not they survive the the next few nights, probably the next week or so, and that will help me determine whether or not I need to bring my other seedlings out so I can get them hardened off. But uh, there isn't any rush. I still have lots of space under the lights in the house, but that's why I'm calling these the canary in the gold mine. Well, what you're looking at there is one cluster of seedlings of the Cape gooseberry or ground cherry that came from one. Uh, I get my fingers in there or not? Yeah, that is one dried husk that got left behind. and I haven't opened that yet. I hope to show you what's inside of it. But that cluster of seedlings came from one of those. Every one of those pieces of fruit that you leave on the ground over winter produces that many seedlings and I have got a carpet of them in here. I'll see if I can show you what's inside of that one. Now, will this stay in focus is the next thing I have. That is the dried up gooseberry or ground cherry, whatever you want to call it. And that is nothing but a cluster of seeds, if I can get it broken apart here. Yeah. I hope that shows. I haven't counted, but there's probably close to a hundred seeds in every one of them and they're all viable believe me I've got lots of them growing in here I'm going to be weeding these things out forever I don't intend to let any grow up to produce fruit in here because it's such a problem but I do have a couple of friends that are looking for seedlings this spring from me and I won't have any trouble providing them I'm going to pot some of these up before I turn this under because that's a part of where I want to put my onions well, before I start preparing the onion bed I just wanted to show you a little look at this stuff this is two-year-old uh, barn dressing and chicken manure with some you know, kitchen scraps and whatever composted in it, but it has turned into beautiful stuff. I wish I had a ton of it. That was the first year for the hens, and they were small, so they didn't produce a great deal. I've got another large pile that's a year old, and another big pile that I just started this spring. So. I will have lots to use in the future, but I have to be a little sparing with it this spring. I've only got this one relatively small pile. Oh, I could probably fill that container 25 or 30 times out of it, but uh, 
not a lot of it this spring. This is the smallest of the two beds where I hope to plant my onion seedlings. I amended it with that uh, container of compost that you saw. A liberal amount of an organic balanced 444 fertilizer and quite a bit of volcanic rock dust which I started using last year. I'm not so convinced that it does anything any good but it doesn't seem to do any harm. I have now taken a sample of the soil. I've wet it really well and compacted it in that terracotta pot. The instruction sheet that came with my pH tester says between 6 and 7 uh, on the meter is ideal for onions. And I think I'm a little above that if I compress it some more. No, I guess not. We're just sort of at the 7. So, Although I can press there and it goes lower. How do you know? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and that compaction there, it went down to five. So I think I am going to uh, add some lime to this. And it slowly creeps back up, but that is that is too acidic. It should be between six and seven. So first time I've seen the meter work that well, I was beginning to wonder if it always read up around 7. That's where it seemed to stay before. But one thing I forgot to mention with my canary in the gold mine here, that tall spindly pepper. I just pinched out the growing tip, the top, pruned it. Uh, I know I've watched a video where someone else did that in the past and had excellent results. If you've done it, would you please leave comment? I've only done it to this one. I'm tempted to do it to the rest that are under the lights. It's the only variety that's doing that. I have two other um, sweet varieties, not bell peppers, but sweet varieties, and I have a hot Hungarian hot wax, and, and they're just growing nice compact little plants, but these things have really bolted up. So if you've pruned pepper plants, let me know what you did and how it worked. I'm not so sure if this is in focus. As I say many times, I can never tell. But, uh, I wanted to show you that no matter how small these tiny little onion seedlings are, the soil all fell off this one, so I thought I'd give you a look at it. Even that tiny little thing has started to develop a bulb. I did amend the soil with, uh, oh, I don't know, that little bed got over maybe a cup and a half or so of pelletized lime. And now I'm transplanting them, and I'll show you what that looks like when I finish. I'm transplanting them about six inches apart um, in all directions. Well, that way, if they start to get too thick or whatever, I can pull smaller ones and have them for green onions. And there's the onions looking a bit knocked down because after I transplanted them, I watered them heavily to get them watered in. It's fairly warm in here, high, well, high 20s, I guess, maybe 28 degrees or so in here right now. And they are planted in two small beds either side of my little strawberry patch here. The other ones are down there. And the two flats on the end, that's the sweet peas, which I still don't have a single germination. And the uh, coal crops and lettuce. And the, if you watched the last video, I had to reseed some of the cabbage. They're coming up. I'll give you a little look at the daikon and the uh, peas and that'll close this off. That's one of the daikon. They're starting to uh, get their third leaf. True leaves are starting on them. And I'll see if I can zoom back and show you the rest of them there. They're doing fairly well. It's only been, what, maybe four days since my last video and I'm really impressed with how the peas have come up. All five of the little rows are up and growing. Thank you very much for watching. That concludes this little look around at what I'm up to in here. I just wanted to show you that the uh, plant cam over there is watching the peas. So sometime there will be a time lapse hopefully of the peas growing and blooming.